What's up, gangsters? It's a slow Sunday afternoon, and the Cowboys are not playing football today, so seems like a good time as any for 10 minutes of random. Okay, so here we go. What I have been working on still since the last 10 minutes of random is uh, my Tamiya 1.6 Honda Monkey. And I am uh, at about the stopping place I've been trying to get to for a while, which is to have the engine like 90% or 95% complete. Uh, there's just a couple of things that um, I can't really do to it yet, but for the most part, it is all good, and I am pretty stoked. I think this thing, uh, I think this thing looks uh, pretty sweet. Um, one of my goals, I think I mentioned, was to replace all of the fastening hardware, and I've done that. Uh, you can see I've got some. Uh, turned uh, aluminum bolt heads from RB Motion, even some acorn nuts there on the cylinder head, um, and then all of these uh, red bolt heads for the cases are uh, resin flange head bolts from Master Club. And uh, I made them red anodized the same way that I made all this other red anodizing, which is to shoot on a base layer of MRP Super Silver and then uh, very lightly spray on top of that a mix of MRP Clear Red and a little bit of Tamiya Clear Blue. Um, if you didn't know, MRP makes clears. They do. They're pretty cool. They're lacquers like their other stuff. But it was just a little too bright and a little too red for that classic uh, sort of red wine, red anodizing look. And you can always get there by uh, when your red is too bright by adding a little blue. And yeah, uh, it is a fact that Tamiya uh, will mix with MRP just fine. The uh, clears are a little different than Tamiya's regular paint from what I can tell. And, um, and so it's, a good, it's good to test, but all it took to get the right tone uh, for this was just about 10% uh, of the clear blue uh, dropped into the uh, MRP clear red. You can kind of see what I mean. That's, that's what the clear red looks like. You can see how bright it was. That just wouldn't have been right for uh, that red anodized look. So I was pretty stoked to get there. Um, I also added just a little bit more thinner to make it even a little bit uh, less opaque. And that's two or three layers, I think, that got me there. So I'm pretty stoked about that. The hose clamp here, I'm pretty proud of. This is one of those places where a Molotow chrome ink pin works really well. Because what I do is I just take um, either a piece of my... Uh, Izu uh, skinny skinny masking tape uh, and color it chrome with the pin and that makes up the band of the clamp it works really well you know and you don't have to have the Izu skinny tape even though it is super handy you can always use uh, one of these uh, this is another one of my favorite tools the Infini Type A cutting mat makes it super easy to cut strips of whatever width you need. And in fact, that's what I did for this hose clamp because my uh, Izu tape was just not the right width to look right, even though I have uh, three different widths of the stuff. Um, but anyway, you can see it makes a, a nice, makes a nice tight uh, clamp. You just Put it on there, super glue the end of it, wrap it around, super glue it again, and you're in good shape. The uh, screw portion of the clamp I was pretty stoked about. That is, uh, well here, I can pop the carburetor off because this is still just held on here with magnets. The uh, screw part there is just um, another one of those Master Club, come on, focus up. Another one of those Master Club uh, resin bolts slipped inside of a piece of brass tubing, glued onto a, a little shim of, of evergreen stock to give it a little bit of an offset, and then super glued on and everything uh, painted up. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about the way it looks. This hose is kind of a, kind of a neat thing. Um, I use the uh, hairline 
uh, vinyl tubing that you can get on Amazon or, you know, or any place that you buy fly tying supplies for scale hoses. Um, and that stuff is really cool. But they don't have any uh, anything larger than about three mil or three millimeter, about one millimeter. Um, it is sized as micro, midge, and regular, and comes in like 20 different colors. So it's really cool. Like you can see, this translucent green one is really nice, um, and it's it's really really handy stuff. But that one millimeter size is just slightly smaller than the black tubing that comes in a lot of Tamiya kits. And I didn't want black tubing, so I had to try to find some clear that had a one millimeter ID because that's the only thing that was going to slip over the little nubs that they provide you there on the sides of the carburetor and on the float bowl. So I found a place that sells this kind of tubing for medical uses. But they only sell like 100 foot rolls and uh, I was able to have a really nice conversation with the dude and uh, he was like, you know what, let me see if I can find some off cuts that are like 10 feet long because a lot of times we end up with, with those when, you know, when we're uh, making up our rolls and if I have some, I'll hook you up. And he did. He sold me three pieces that were 10, 10 feet long each of uh, three different sizes, like a millimeter, a millimeter and a half, two millimeter, for like five bucks a piece, plus shipping, it was great. So I'm pretty stoked about that. And I have made the requisite hose clip that's on these bikes. You can see it down there. I don't have the, the hose clipped into it yet, but you can see it down there. I made that out of a little strip of uh, beer can aluminum and that's where I got to once again use one of my new favorite tools, uh, which are these things right here. OMG. Peter Buckingham, one of our most gangster contributors in Scale Modeler Critique Group. He's a world-class model maker and he builds a lot of uh, 1 12th scale motorcycles, 1 9th scale motorcycles. Um, it's, I mean, it is seriously the kind of stuff that should win Telford if they had competent judges in the motorcycle class. But that's a whole other, uh, that's a whole other rant. Anyway, these things I got from Rio Grande, uh, which is uh, a jewelry tool supply place here in the United States. And if you're a tool whore like me, don't go there with a full wallet because you will, <laughs> you will be sorry. Anyway, these things are called jeweler's brooches and, and uh, maybe they're made for just punching square holes, but what Peter recommended them for is reaming uh, uh, a round hole. And they do indeed look more like a reamer to me than a brooch. You can see it's a four-sided thing. It's got a long skinny taper on it. You just put it in the hole and twist it around and it will help you tease out that diameter just enough to get something to fit. And that's what happened to me when I was making that little hose clip. I punched a hole in it with one of my hole punches, thinking that it was supposed to be 1.2 millimeters, but I couldn't get the uh, little resin bolt to go through it easily enough. And so I was able to uh, use the little reamer there to fix that. Okay, uh, so this is the next exciting thing that's on my workbench. I got a minute to talk about it. So this is pretty cool. This right here is a setup that I just bought um, from this company called Caswell. And as you can see, it is for nickel electroplate. This, is, this was like 70 bucks. And uh, there's tons of videos on YouTube about how you can make a do-it-yourself nickel plating setup, but I didn't really want to go through all that. This has everything you need, including a little power supply and uh, the uh, electrolytes and, and basically all the instructions. So the reason that I bought that is because I'm going to attempt anyway to electroplate the uh, clamp on uh, the muffler here uh, before I paint the, uh, the, the the ridges black to represent the black rubber liner. And I'm gonna be starting the Bruff Superior from 
Model Factory Hero pretty soon, and it has tons of white metal parts, and I'm thinking that this may also apply there, as well as to a couple of other bits on this little Honda Monkey project. So, pretty cool. There's going to be some science happening. And that's 10 minutes. Adios.